Award Ceremony, celebrating the 20th Annual David O. Cook Excellence in Public Administration Award and the 69th Annual Distinguished Civilian Service Awards. Please stand for the arrival of the official party, the Honorable Sean G. Skelly, performing the duties of the Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness, Ms. Jennifer C. Walsh, Performance Improvement Officer and Director of Administration and Management, and Pastor John P. Goodlow, Senior Chaplain. Please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem, followed by the invocation. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave <clears throat> as is my tradition i'm asking please that you would join me as I pray in my tradition and in yours, please pray, shall we? Oh God, we're so grateful for what you have done and how you have blessed us and allowing us this privilege to be here, that we might recognize those who believe in excellence. We understand, oh God, that excellence itself begins with a mindset. And the mindset, O oh God, includes that which you have given to me that says we are to be careful, we are to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we are simply to let our requests be made known unto you. And when we do that, O oh God, the peace that you bring shall keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for those who are indeed receiving recognition for that which they have done and it was not done and they have not and will not continue to do in order to receive awards, but they will do because they are so moved and so at peace with themselves in order to serve others and in order to give back that which they have indeed received. And so, O oh God, we ask that you would help us then to understand that whatsoever things are true and honest, whatsoever things are lovely and pure, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, help us to think on these things, O oh God. And when we do that, our efforts will be toward you. And in our efforts toward you, you will then allow us to serve others. We ask, O oh God, that these things be done in the matchless name of Jesus. And for his sake we pray, let us all say amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Jennifer C. Walsh, Performance Improvement Officer and Director of Administration and Management.
Good morning and welcome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so few people respond back. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Pastor Goodlow, thank you for being here, for your words and your continued support of this community. Thank you. I am honored to be a part of this awards ceremony to recognize the accomplishments of 10 exceptional career civilian team members who have made significant contributions that advance defense and national security missions in ways most or many in the department and probably members of their family do not know that they, they do every day or those bars that they have raised, those finish lines they have crossed. We are honoring today the recipient of the David O. Cook Excellence in Public Administration Award and the recipients of the department's competitive process for the DOD Distinguished Civilian Service Award. The first award category, which we affectionately call the Doc Cook Award, is special to me for several reasons. First, Doc Cook was actually on my interview panel in 1996 and helped me see a future for myself in this department. And even with that, I never thought I would be in the position, the same position that he envisioned back in 1958 and served in for over 45 years of service until 2002. He remains a legend. And for those who worked for him and those who are around him, and then certainly the lessons to those um, that we have passed on that reflect his influence on this department and our civilian service community. Second, I also recall with great clarity the first Doc Cook Award ceremony 20 years ago, which actually recognized another member of the OSD policy community, uh, David Radcliffe. That event was significant then, we all knew it, and it has only grown in meaning, breadth and depth since then. I wanna recognize that we have several prior recipients of the Doc Cook Award uh, with us today, including last year's recipient, uh, Justin Gerber. Thank you all for being here, and uh, please do welcome in the newest member of the club uh, after today's event. The second award category is notable for many reasons but I will focus on the fact that nine colleagues we honor today are receiving this recognition through a department-wide competitive process. Department-wide. This, too, is quite an accomplishment. You will hear a brief review of their work, and I am confident that you, like I, will be grateful for their commitment to public service. I regret I'm not able to join the balance of the event. Uh, one of my responsibilities is to oversee the department's presidential transition support work, and we have an executive branch uh, meeting uh, for that work that starts today um, shortly. But first, I would not miss the opportunity of introducing a colleague and an incredible leader whose dedication to public service is lifelong and forward-leaning and forward-looking. She has demonstrated a track record of delivering results to people, to processes, to organizations, and institutions. And fortunately for all of us, especially to this institution. In the role of the department's Deputy Undersecretary for Personnel and Readiness, our keynote speaker leads policy formulation, coordination, and integration on issues that affect every single member of this department, civilian, military, contractors alike. She is a thoughtful, deliberate, and strategic thinker whose appreciation for operational realities makes her exponentially even more relevant and effective in leading this department. I am honored to invite to the podium the Honorable Sean Skelly. I'm going to need a copy of that, please. <laughs> um, no, I have to do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's an honor to be here with you today to celebrate the recipients of these two incredibly distinguished awards. The David O. Cook Excellence in Public Administration Award and the Distinguished Civilian Service Award. 
So um, to get to the quick, on behalf of Deputy Secretary Hicks, congratulations and thank you for what you do every day for the department and the nation we defend. To expound a little bit more on the legacy of Doc Cook, David O. Cook was an ex extraordinary leader who served generations, as Jennifer just described, generations of Pentagon employees and championed a cooperative spirit while improving overall operations through, throughout the Pentagon reservation. He was known by many who worked here by his initials, DOC Doc. As the department's first director of administration and management, Doc Cook had a vast institutional memory in, with colleagues and friends spread across Washington's power structure. He was a consummate professional throughout his career, but he was also known for how he brought his humor to lighten what we all know to often be and appropriately required a very serious atmosphere within this building and on the reservation. His commitment to upgrading the operations and aging structure of the Pentagon proved to be prescient. His management of the programs for strengthening the Pentagon's very infrastructure would later provide unforeseeable benefits in saving lives during the 9-11 attack. He spent his career under 12 secretaries of defense, over 45 plus years of service, and his many honors included seven awards of the Defense Civilian Service Award. He led by example with integrity, critical thinking, and a passion for the people and the department he served. Excuse me. The, the Distinguished Civilian Service Award is the highest and longest standing co commendation given to those career civilian employees who have demonstrated considerable devotion to duty. While each recipient has made individual and unique contributions to the Department of Defense throughout their careers, they all share a common dedication to public service. And this is where I get off script, so buckle up. <clears throat> But as Jennifer mentioned, um, as Deputy Undersecretary of Defense performing the duties for PNR, um, we have responsibility for the total force, nearly 3.4 million people, which includes 800,000 career civilian employees across the breadth of the department through all the military departments, the services, the combat support agencies, the, the uh, field activities and agencies of the department, our combatant commands globally. <coughs> and as many people don't quite understand, over 85% of all career civilian uh, employees of the entire federal government are not in, in DC. <laughs> They're all across the nation and in our case, across the world. In the course of my, doing my job in uh, helping to take care of the policies that take care of our people under the Secretary of Defense's great leadership on that account, I often hearken back to one of the, uh, the aphorisms, the truths I, I know and lean upon when thinking about how we do the business and how other people think we do the business of the Department of Defense. It was about um, 1980 where a Marine General, General Robert Barrow, was credited and quoted in the San Diego Tribune at the time, something many of us hear quite often. Amateurs talk tactics, professionals study logistics and sustainment in time of war. It's very easy to be distracted by the flashiness of things. Especially in the Department of Defense, we have satellites, stealth fighters, submarines, tanks, ships, drones of all kinds. None of it happens, none of it works without people. People in uniform and the zeitgeist of the conversation about the Department of Defense's business is rightly focused on the young men and women that we need to join the department, join the military every year, year after year in perpetuity. And that's a vital part of how we defend the nation. None of that works without the career and civilian employees who are the foundation and the real tent pole of the department, the enduring expertise and knowledge and leadership that are developed over decades. Anybody who doesn't understand how central civ civilians are to the Department of Defense comes up short in their appreciation of how the Department of Defense does its job for the entire nation, of the people, by the people, for the people. Career civilians are the heart of all that. So I ask you, when I had the opportunity to re read the citations that are about to be awarded here momentarily, I was really struck by the fact that these 10 citations all talk about the most pressing issues we talk about on the E-ring every day. It's about crisis response. It's about developing partners across the world. It's about new and inventive ways to take care of those 3.4 million people we have responsibility for. It's about spending the taxpayer dollars ever better, ever smarter, ever more effectively. It's about 
keeping our systems safe and operating so we can do all the other business that are there. This is vital, essential work, and it represents what all our career civilians bring to the Department of Defense all across the nation, and especially inside this building as we lead this effort on behalf of the American people. So to all of the honorees here with us this morning, I extend my sincere thanks for what you've done and what you will continue to do on behalf of the nation. So congratulations. Thank you. We will now begin the recognition portion of today's ceremony. The David O. Cook Excellence in Public Administration Award is presented to an individual who demonstrates great leadership potential as a future federal executive. Joining the Honorable Sean G. Kelly on stage is Ms. Jennifer C. Walsh for the presentation of this year's award. In spirit. <laughs> <laughs> this year's award is presented to Mr. Christopher D. Mondluk, Chief of Staff, Office of the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Russia, Ukraine, and Eurasia. Office of the Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs. Department of Defense Distinguished Service Civilian Award is presented to select civilian employees whose careers reflect exceptional devotion to duty and significant contributions that have led to increased effectiveness in the defense of operation of the Department of Defense. We begin by recognizing Mr. James M. Erskine, Senior Acquisition Advisor for Maritime Programs and Acquisition, Innovation, Capabilities, and Acquisition Division, Directorate for Force Structure, Resources, and Assessment J8, Office of the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Presenting the award on behalf of Office of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is Ms. Jennifer J. Blau, Vice Director of Force Structure, Resources and Assessment, Joint Staff J8. An impectual leader, he has been exceptional in his service as the Senior Acquisition Advisor for Maritime programs while creating linkages across the DOD to accelerate acquisition reform initiatives originating from the Deputy Secretary of Defense and Under Secretaries of Defense for Research and Engineering and Acquisition and Sustainment. We now recognize Mr. Alan M. Poffenberger, Chief Geophysical Capabilities and Assessments, 23rd Analysis Squadron, 709th Surveillance and Analysis Group, Air Force Technical Application Center, Patrick Space Force Base. Keep breathing, <laughs> to the next person. Presenting the award on behalf of the United States Air Force is Colonel Creighton A. Mullins, Commander, Air Force Technical Application Center, Patrick Space Force Base, Florida. Yeah. Mr. Poffenberger's dedication and expertise resulted in the Air Force Technical Application Center Geophysical Mission System software being named the United States National Data Center and serves as the system by which the International Data Center is dependent on and modeled after. Additionally, he has repeatedly campaigned to fill short 
shortfall is securing and leveraging nearly 300 million in interagency fundings in recent years to modernize and accelerate the Department of the Air Force's geophysical monitoring program and capability to ensure a sustained ability to conduct global nuclear treaty monitoring and verification. Finally, he led a first ever geophysical monitoring station operational prioritizing effort to permit resource requirements mismatch decisions resulting in a decision to close or transition multiple treaty monitoring sites to other mission partners with no mission impact and saving $1.6 million annually. We now recognize Mr. Dean R. Evans. Palatinize Effects Operational Experimentation Led and Rapid Dragon Program Manager, Strategic Development Planning and Explanation Office, Air Force Research Laboratory, Eglin Air Force Base. Keep reading. Presenting the award on behalf of the United States Air Force is Dr. Timothy J.J. Bunning, Chief Technology Officer, Air Force Research Laboratory, Air Force Material Command, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Dr. Evans' exceptional efforts have transformed how the DOD and its strategic allies counterattack peer adversaries by designing, building, testing, and transitioning a palatinized munitions capability called Rapid Dragon. He established what DOD senior leaders are calling a game changer that will enable the department and its allies to put at risk numerous targets simultaneously. As a career innovator, Dr. Evans is widely regarded as a global technical expert in the field of operation optical materials. We now recognize Mr. Siddharth H. Iyer, Director for South Asia, Office of the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Indo-Pacific Security Affairs, Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Policy. Presenting the award on behalf of Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Policy is Ms. Amanda J. Dory, the Acting Undersecretary of Defense for Policy. Mr. Iyer has played a critical role for DOD in building a strategic partnership with India. He has provided indispensable advice and support to the Secretary and other DOD leaders in advancing the bilateral relationship. He has developed a roadmap of specific objectives and initiatives for DOD under the Major Defense Partner designation that together help translate the broad strategic alignment in the relationship into tangible areas and cooperation. He has led development of groundbreaking defense industrial cooperations and he has had spearheaded efforts to expand information sharing and operational cooperation. On Southeast Asia, Mr. Iyer charted a course for expanded partnership with Vietnam by prioritizing war legacy issues and information sharing. He further envisioned a new approach to building South China Sea Partners capabilities, which was approved by the interagency's deputy committees. We now recognize Mr. Dominic S. Angelo, Attorney Advisor, Office of the Staff Judge Advocate, United States Air Force Academy. Presenting the award on behalf of the United States Air Force is Major General Thomas P. Sherman, Vice Superintendent, United States Air Force Academy. Mr. Angelo has made significant contributions to the DOD with a specific emphasis on improving the experience for cadets and midshipmen at the Military Service Academies and survivors of sexual assault across the DOD. Mr. Angelo's contribution to the DOD is demonstrated primarily through his work drafting the nascent safe to report policy, which was subsequently adopted in federal law by Congress and implemented across the DOD. In addition, Mr. Angelo's efforts to support parents at the MSAS resulted in enactment of a federal law directing DOD to provide cadets and midmanship avenue to maintain parental rights whilst remaining in training at their respective MSA. We now recognize Mr. Michael S. Wood, Technical Director, Financial Management Directorate, Space Systems Command, Los Angeles Air Force Base. Presenting the award on behalf of the United States Space Force is Colonel Benjamin A. Jans, Director, Financial Management and Comptroller Space Systems Command, Los Angeles Air Force Base. 
Mr. Wood has been the single greatest driver in the Department of the Air Force. Space financial community's efforts to develop recommended reforms in fiscal law policy and data and analytics that achieve more efficient use of funds, improve financial risk mitigation, and apply new business models to reflect the space enterprise better. Mr. Wood's insights into root causes have ongoing real results for taxpayers. His risk mitigation efforts across the space system's commands $15.6 billion annual portfolio are valued at over $500 million per year, freeing program resources to deliver on-orbit capabilities instead of risk management. His bold win-win reform initiatives resulted in improved transparency to Congress and increased congressional support for fiscal policy reforms. We now recognize Mr. Richard F. Rico, Executive Director, Space Operations, National Guard Bureau. Presenting the award on behalf of the National Guard Bureau is General Stephen S. Nordhaus, the 30th Chief of National Guard Bureau and as a member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. <laughs> Mr. Rico's active participation in the Reserve Forces Policy Board was a catalyst for change as the DOD better aligns benefits to include duty status, reform, and dual basic allowance for housing for the Guard and Reserve. Constantly pursuing excellence, Mr. Rico helped shape hundreds of furniture leaders through years of command development courses and senior leader conferences across 90 Air National Guard wings. His commitment to mentoring and building a solid bench ensured future leaders of the National Guard stand ready to meet any challenge. We now recognize Mr. Gregory M. Eames, <laughs> Staff Specialist for Command and Control, Military Health Systems and Cyber Operations Director, Operational Test and Evaluation. Presenting the award on behalf of Office of Director, Operational Test and Evaluation, Dr. Raymond D. O'Toole, Jr., the Principal Deputy Director. Upon learning of a severe impending national security issue in the Indo-Pacific Command area of responsibility, Mr. Eames immediately acted to coordinate, plan, and help execute a multi-agency response at the executive level to avert the potential compromise of a multi-billion dollar acquisition and future military operations planning. Not only did his actions establish a new pentagram for informing and prioritizing director, operational tests, and evaluation assessments in support of the combatant commands, service, and agencies, Mr. Eames' technical acumen, dedication, and leadership enabled an unprecedented global logistics effort Elimination of bureaucratic barriers to mitigate threats to critical combat support systems and coordination between the test community and Indopacom to ensure future missions remain viable. <laughs> Presenting the award on behalf of the Department of the Army, Lieutenant General David J. Francis. Deputy Commanding General, United States Army Training. I think we skipped the awardee. Awardee. We did, man. I'm okay. sorry. We now recognize Mr. Michael S. McGurk, Director, United States Army Center for Initial Military Training Research and Analysis Directorate, Joint Base Langley Eustis. Presenting the award on behalf of the Department of the Army, Lieutenant General David J. Francis, Deputy Commanding General, United States Army, Training and Doctrine Command and Commanding General, United States Army, Center for Initial Military Training, Joint Base Langley, Eustis, Virginia. Mr. McGurk is the principal developer, author, and father of four major health and fitness programs and changes, as well as countless minor initiatives and acquisitions that impact every single soldier in the Army daily. These include, but are not limited to, the Army's operational physical assessment test used to evaluate fitness of every prospective Army recruit, reducing attrition and injuries in initial entry training. The Army Combat Fitness Test, which has an 80% correlation to physical fitness for combat versus the previous test, which only had a 40% correlation, and which also represents the first substantive change to Army fitness culture in over 40 years. At this time, we would like all the honorees to return to the front of the stage for a group photo with the Honorable Sean G. Kelly. Thanks. 
Good question. Um, who's driving? Are you driving this? Yes. So we can do two rows. Two rows. Right. Bring the first group here, but the first group's actually going to be on the floor because it keeps. Where do you want me? Uh, you'll be right there. concludes today's proceedings. Thank you very much. Hey, no worries.